That's real, real quick though, ramen or the the ramen squares, right? Or the couple noodles squares. Cup. What? <laughs> Bruh, you tripping. I like the cup. What do you want to deal with, basically? <laughs> man, I say zombie. Obviously, yeah, they're zombie. not going to die, but a robot, man, he punch you in the face once <laughs> you're, you're dead. Out. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you run into a zombie, you know, you oh, can yeah, maybe they rip got his bullets, arms you're off. Done. You can't do right. nothing, but, you they know, do this. They got bullets in their like, arms. <laughs> yeah, it's a wrap. Trolls or Frozen? Trolls. Man, why are you thinking about this, man? <laughs> I, would, I would say trolls, though. I'm trying, but because oh, I may you have do not been, like Elsa. <laughs> well, see, the problem is. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, welcome to Inside the Pack podcast. This is uh, episode thirty of oh, thirty, huh? Yep. No, we're we're at episode forty-one. Uh, believe it or not, and uh, as you guys can see, it's very different around here. We are in a studio like can we believe that we're in the heart of phoenix who knows man <laughs> uh... we're in the heart of phoenix and uh, um we are here at gridworks you know so shout out to gridworks for providing this space of inside the pack podcast uh, as always my name is star sua i'm the host i'm the owner of pacific Ave company and uh before i introduce the guests as you guys can see these beautiful people here um i'm gonna tell you guys who this podcast is brought to you by Brought to you by Pacific Ave Company, and I will pull up their information. I should know it because it's my company, right? But Pacific Ave Company is a is a brand and movement fostering unity within the diverse cultures of Polynesia, Melanesia, and Micronesia, celebrating our collective shared heritage and promoting our connection to each other while educating the global community about our rich and diverse cultures. And Another thing, if you guys want 10% off your any purchase, you know, just go to our website and subscribe to the newsletter. Um, you'll get an email sent to you, and uh, the discount code is going to be right there That's for you cool. to use. So oh, pretty. let's get into the heart of it. So obviously you guys can see that we have a guest, two guests with us, and uh, they are brother and sister, Piazza Tupolotu and Ben Tupolotu. Welcome on into the podcast. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Star. Appreciate it. You guys are uh, nervous, huh? Okay, gotcha. I'm like, <laughs> Just okay. a little bit, but I think you're you. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, my name is Ben Uh My governments are Paul. So for those of you watching, here we are. Um, basically, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, uh, from the islands of the valley. <laughs> uh, aside from that, um, pretty much, what do we go after that? That's just, up to you. Just see what you, uh, okay. what do you do, okay. all that stuff. Okay, so currently right now, um, I'm actually in sales. Um, also working with Lions Properties. Uh, check us out. We also do uh, GC work, construction, um, and real estate, along with residential and commercial. Um, Beth over here, our coordinator, will actually touch more base on uh, what we do. Uh, so, yeah. Nice, nice. Nice. <laughs> Thank you for being here. <laughs> Uh, my name is Beata Tuipolotu, um, also known as Macy May, for those uh, of you that only know me by Macy. Um, I do work with Lions Properties and Construction, and I'm actually a cosmetologist. Um, I specialize in lashes. Um, anything beauty I like, any kind of makeover, stuff like that, I'm into that. Um, I, need, I need to do my lashes, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, I be braiding hair. I, I do everything. So, um, yeah, I've, been, I've been looking for people all. to braid my hair for oh, the for longest real? time. Yeah, for I got the you. Time. Yeah, um, does it all, man. Yeah, Studio Talavo. So, um, but back to construction with Lions Properties. Um, we pretty much do residential and commercial, like Ben said. Mm -hmm. um, we've built um, a couple of dispensaries and worked on a few um, cookies in Tempe. You guys should go check it out. It looks really good. Um, also, the Nirvana, it's a, on 7th Street in Buckeye. It's like a black building, but it looks really good. Um, that was, that place looks really good um, from the beginning to end. Just the whole um, change, it looked really good. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, um, we didn't start off like that yeah, <laughs> growing no up. Yeah, no doubt. Um, <laughs> I was telling Ben, you know, when uh, we had the grand opening at Cookies, I was like, you remember when we had that, the, you know, the U-Haul white trucks back then? Yeah. We had one of those, oh, but man. it was like, there was a whole hole in the ground, right. <laughs> like where the <laughs> engine Legit. was. Right, right. But like, there was a bunch of boys at home that woke up every morning at five to go yate, like cut grass and stuff. That's where it all started from. So, 
um, just to see that transition of where we are and how we completed that project. It was a really big um, accomplishment for accomplishment for us. So, right, right, right. Yeah, mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's a. Uh, um you know, we, we, we like to, especially in the Pacific Island community, we like to say that, uh, humble beginnings, right? Yes, oh, very humble and, uh, beginnings. Absolutely. It's very, very common with throughout every island, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of um, of our culture, I don't think, um, what is your guys' ethnic backgrounds? Or what what, what are you guys, basically? Oh, we're full Tongan. Tongan. Um, Tongan as well. Tongan, and I'm Samoan. Yep. And, you know, there's a, a uniqueness within each culture, right? But, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's what I like to talk about on the podcast, uh, uh, spreading spreading the, the word about the Pacific Ave in general is that there's uniqueness within our each islands. But at the same time, we have somewhat similarities of similar upbringings and, and cultures, traditions, all that stuff. So, right. Yeah. Um, and right off the bat, like, you know, we're away from our islands, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, we meet some, we meet each other here, you know, somewhere else, right? And we instantly connect, right? Instantly, and that's, that's, yes. that's one thing that, you know, with, within our islanders uh, is uh, very strong within our peoples, basically, right? right? Mm-hmm. Well, so. thank you for coming by. <laughs> thank you guys for having us, us for like, sure. Uh, like, genuinely, uh, this is yeah, a good thank, you thank you for the opportunity. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's really, I, I really wanted to give people you know, our peoples, really, from our islands, uh, the opportunity just to, you know, share their story, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, we will, you know, our podcast, our, our company will be kind of up there, but, you know, this is a small platform that, you know, I would, you know, want to give the opportunities for our peoples to share their story, and, uh, you know, it starts with that, you know, it starts with their story, and, you know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, are afraid to do things, afraid to pursue their dreams or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. But, you know, for them to kind of, you know, stumble up, uh, upon our podcast and, you know, hear, you know, genuine stories from, you know, your everyday people. Right. It kind of gives them motivation. Right. right. So uh, we'll dive in uh, deep more, you know, soon. But I, I wanted to kind of break the ice and, uh, you know, do a little fun activity. And we, we, we like to do. Uh, this thing called questions roulette and um, I don't know if you're familiar with what it is but uh, basically there's 10 questions and at rapid fire you guys got to answer you know it's kind of like this or that type of thing just real quick as I bring the questions up um, growing up like how much I know you guys have other siblings right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how much of a a, kind of they have they have like the what do they say with with twins they have like that twin telepathy where like they know exactly what the other's thinking or doing or Mm -hmm. whatever Mm -hmm. um I think, uh, I think, I think Kayla and Hoku, like they talked about, you know, they feel each other's pain, pain. like literally, yeah, like that's no. pretty crazy. But yeah, um, yeah well, well, give me an example of like that type of connection between you guys, mm. if there is any. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like for us, when we grew up, all we had was each other, um, you know, like, you know, grown folk stuff that we couldn't really control um, at the time. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, the Polynesian is very um, big with like family sticking together, but um, our story is a little bit different. And I feel like that's why we are where we are today, um, because we didn't have that the full guidance from, you know, the solid foundation. So mm-hmm. all we had was each other to lean on and um, pretty much try to move forward and and maneuver in ways that we could never imagine. Um, and mind you, my brothers, they were older, but they were still like, you know, they had us too. So mm-hmm. we had to kind of like, all right, look, this is what it is. Mm-hmm. This is what it's not. And we got to figure out a way of how we can um, move forward and just, just stick together, just do what we got to do and just keep just keep going, regardless of, um, you know, whatever situation comes at us. So it's kind of kind of reminds me of a little saying that people say, like breaking the mold, mm-hmm. you know, like we have oh. this set mold that either from our own peoples or from the, the non islanders that like, oh, this is the stigma. This is the mold that I guess, lack of better words, these type of people are. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's there's pros, there's cons to it. But, you know, I, I, I think the last episode I said, you know, the, the world changes constantly. Right. Oh. So mm-hmm. we got to adjust our lives. We got to exactly. change, but not not forget who we are right right so um yeah let's get to these questions okay. you know right. i want to i want to laugh uh, <laughs> I know. right i want to laugh i want to debate a little bit. yeah <laughs> like, get hey, an argument maybe yeah get an argument uh um 
So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you guys, this is your favorite time. Uh, questions roulette. You know, we rapid fire. I, I like to say rapid fire, but there are some uh, uh, answers that, like, when somebody answers them, like, wait, 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 we got to talk about this. I see. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's no way. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so real quick, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through the questions and then, uh, yeah, just answer it. All and right. Can you either answer it? Whoever can go first, no matter. Um, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see I was it. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, that was kind of before. It's like, I'm going to do all these. Yeah, <laughs> like, he's yeah, like, yeah. you go first. <laughs> yeah. no, just all right. All right. Uh, first question. Okay. Under Armour or Adidas? Mm. Under Armour. Under Armour. No. Beata? I'll have to go with Under Armour because that's who I went with in volleyball. So I see. Yeah. I'm the I'm the Adidas type of guy. I but oh, I have yep. a bunch of Yeezys, so I gotta go with Adidas <laughs> too. So I'm right. like I don't I'm know like, which I one. Mean, aside from the shoes, yeah, like you if you're going saying, shoes, I go Adidas. Cool, but, but everything sports what? Yeah, like yeah, I gotta go with Under Armour for sure. The reason why I asked Under Armour Adidas because before it was Adidas or Nike, uh, and it's like almost it's always Nike, yeah, it's always right? Nike. Like yeah. right. always gonna choose Nike. But I'm like, hey, let me let me curveball yeah. real quick. Okay, okay. you know, so nice, the fifty nice. fifty because no, you know like, <laughs> my volleyball was all arm like sports armor. So yeah, for yeah. Real. That's one thing about Under so volleyball. Yeah, Under Armour. Yeah. Yeah, one thing about Under Armour, they're very good. Well, at least with the sports side of things. Right, because oh, like um, at Phoenix College, like everything was just. Mm -hmm. straight you know the uniforms they gave yeah. you with your backpacks yeah. it was all under armor yeah under armor and even in college football like uh under armor really had to step their game up because right. Nike, Nike was the ish you mm -hmm. know <laughs> right hey remember big goose though you know he has the bulls oh uh, yeah you know, you know so, my you know, my uncle you know you're out you i know. forgot <laughs> <laughs> there's there's our reference to the rock right 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 literally there's no every joke episode right every episode i don't know my my uh, my co-host um i don't think you met her yet but my co-host um was saying that i have a man crush on the rock really i mention him every episode <laughs> but it's like That's you know funny. when we talk about pacific islanders i you know, a lot of people don't like like the way that the, the rock comes off sometimes or whatever. But to me, I I look at the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's literally representing on the biggest stage. Right, mm -hmm. right, straight up. And not just in the nation, in the Rick in the world, Ricky. right? <laughs> in the Ricky world. In the Ricky world. <laughs> world. I'm trying to I'm trying not to swear, you know. <laughs> oh, um, strike one, no, but yeah. But uh, <laughs> hey, the Rock. Uh, if you come across the podcast, uh, we'll I know have you one on, day you know, he's man. gonna be over here. Yeah. No. Watch, he'll he'll be, be in here. Yep. I won't I won't tell anybody because yeah, everybody's gonna be out in this room. Right? Right? Like bodyguards yeah. everywhere. Like, <laughs> all right. Next question. Uh, what movie? Trolls or Frozen? Trolls. Man, why are you thinking about this, man? <laughs> I, would, I would say Trolls though, I'm trying, but because. Oh, I may you do not been, like Elsa. Well, <laughs> see, the problem is, is that I don't remember too much of Trolls, only because I may have been. Well, um, Lena um, liked Elsa, so under. Yeah. Never mind. Under the influence. Yeah, I was like, I may have been under the influence when I was watching Trolls, so I'm sure I enjoyed yeah. it. <laughs> Bro, imagine watching Trolls I was under to the influence. It. Because of like all the bright colors and the weird hair, so you probably, exactly. was, you probably was tripping. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's like, um, can we cut? Right, cut. right, right. Bing bong, bing bong. I need, no, I need to leave this movie. <laughs> no, what? I'm glad you said trolls. Trolls. Is, no, trolls is like, yeah. Trolls. My is girls it. love trolls. Trolls is it. They trolls? be in there like yeah. it's a concert. They be like, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Dude, trolls pretty so much funny. brought um, Justin Timberlake back. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, it did. Yeah, you're right. Well, it I did. love all the it vocals did. that they have in it, like mm -hmm. the melodies, the songs mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they. I love it. It's it's really good. Different okay. genres and everything. Next question. I, I'm interested to hear. Um, we're gonna go through an apocalypse. Huh? Now, a zombie apocalypse or a robot apocalypse. Man, what I do you want to deal with, basically? <laughs> man, I say zombie. Obviously, yeah, they're zombie. not going to die, but a robot, man, you punch you in the face once <laughs> you're, you're dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you run into a zombie, you know, you oh, can yeah, maybe they rip got his bullets, arms you're off. Done. You can't do right. nothing, but, you they know, do this. They got bullets in their like, arms. <laughs> yeah, it's a wrap. Yeah, it's crazy. And then the, the, the side question to that is the zombie apocalypse. Now, it's Walking Dead zombies or World War Z? 
What's oh, man. What about these, the, the crazy fast ones? That I say walking climb dead. Over yeah, I say walking dead, dead because I'm they dead. just call me walking by. Man, they just be like, <laughs> nah. They just call me walking by, right? Yeah. <laughs> they just become a neighbor at that point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll take the walking one. Jeez. Man, like. Yeah, I'm good off of world. Kayla showed me that that movie too. World War Z. Yeah, and like those those zombies are like uh, the I Am Legend. Yeah, um, those zombies. Oh, pff, yeah, the, man. the elite. No zombies, way, you know, bro. Good, mm. man. Hmm. And like, and then in, in those movies, it's like, um, it's not just the, the zombies are fast or agile. They're smart. Dude, they're smart. Oh and no, just, we can't no. do that. Like, no way. Right. <laughs> just the Walking Dead is cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. For you real. might as well just go with the robot because the robot you can just you find a switch in. Yeah, because yeah. you're already scared and like you're right. and you're not gonna be walk, thinking. Yeah. You know? no. So. Yeah. No. Okay. So here is gonna <laughs> here is gonna touch the Fatu a little bit. So now. Not the Fatu. Either this or that, right? Always forget your kid's birthday. Or always forget your spouse's birthday. Um, My kids. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm kids. really good I'm at not, birthdays. I'm sorry, but I'm so. not, because I'm pretty sure my spouse is going to remind me of my kid's birthday. I'm just saying, dude. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because think about it. The kids, I can put to sleep. I sleep with the spouse. I'm going to hear all night about how much I forgot about it. I'm good. I mean, you're not wrong, but now it's like pick your battles. Because they're gonna be on your 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 butt about yeah. I'll forget kids the kids birthday. instead. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty good with birthdays. Yeah. Okay, so you just gotta bribe them. When's my birthday? <laughs> I didn't tell you. <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> uh, camera ready. Shadow for everyone watching. Um. All right. We got a little bit more time for these questions. So, pho or ramen? Mm, ramen. Ramen. Easily. Ramen. That's not even a debate for me. Really. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I've ever. Are you talking about the I, pho? Pho is like the vema, is, the vermicelli noodles, or like you yeah, know, the no, pure, we just go pure. stick with ramen. What I know, no ramen, man. That one's hard for me because you know we grow up with ramen, basically. Right, you know I mean? that's so, what I'm saying. Like it ain't no. even hard for me. It's ramen for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I saw I saw pho as like a, like a bougie type of ramen because then I don't know. It seemed more sophisticated and right. the meal, more whatever, elegant, right? more elegant, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And me and my wife we kind of grew to like super love it, right? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, shout out to Madu Chan, man. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. But I could I could never go wrong with ramen. Like yep. every time I go grocery shopping, you have to buy ramen. Have to. Yeah. Bro, they're now, like 30 <laughs> cents a pop. Exactly. You, know, you get a dollar's worth and you're good. Like so you know when we was kids, we had the whole stack. <laughs> the whole thing, <laughs> exactly. right? Man, for real though. That's real real quick ate. though, ramen or the, the ramen squares, right? Or the cup of noodles. Squares. Cup. What? <laughs> Bro, you tripping. I like the cup. No, like, I, I'm a firm believer in, like, throwing it in the pot and cooking mm. it the way I want to. Because when it's in a cup, it's like, yeah, it's instant or, like, it's fast. You can eat it, but I don't feel like you really enjoy it as much. It it just depends on who makes my noodles with the square one. Because if they oh, overcook it, I'm I'm, I'm not good. Yeah. You're not yeah. wrong. You, not you wrong. I still, do, like, almost like, the reason why I like the, the cup like, is because you know? the noodles don't get, like, really soggy. I feel, that. Still. I feel that. Mm-hmm. Understandable. But if it's the square one, I have to make it. Right, right. That's all. Because I, I swear, I always square, say, you know. please just, just cook it for a little bit and then take it out. And then it comes as hell. Like, no, I don't. Like it. <laughs> like, dude, I'll throw it straight in the fun. trash. It's supposed to be ramen. Like, right, right, it's right. Like soggy like soggy and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. All right, all right. Let's go with the um, two more questions, real quick. Would you rather have ugly toes or ugly fingers? Ooh, <laughs> man, that's rough. Um, well, I'll say toes. toes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You hey, can cover it. Hey, like they say, out of sight, out of mind, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> Walk by faith, not by sight. <laughs> Bruh. But what but what if what if shoes was never invented? It was all open toed sandals. You, you know how the Shaolins do it? They wrap well, their you feet. Just gotta, <laughs> oh, you just gotta you just gotta tuck them in. <laughs> I don't know about that, but not the tuck in. <laughs> oh no. Bruh. All right, hey. we know where we stand on those guys. <laughs> Anybody wants ugly <laughs> fingers? <laughs> no, it's this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's this one. Yeah. Oh, Bro. Shoot, man. <laughs> okay, last one. Chick fil A or Chipotle? Hmm. Chipotle. Hmm. Only because I can get two meals out of, you know, instead of just one. I usually just eat half, you know, that time and then later they, on I they, eat the, the next burritos to be big. Dude. Or you can get a burrito bowl. With oh yeah, side of tortillas. That's you know my order right there. Crazy burrito bowl mm-hmm. with yeah. the tortilla. So you some good? You gonna yeah? Get this Chipotle? guy may have put yeah. me on or not on on it, but you know <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna admit the that. The problem with Chipotle <laughs> is like it's like Taco Bell where you 
you in the bathroom, bro. Really? Really? Freak for me. And what you be ah, getting? What you be getting? Eating a burrito. <laughs> hey, hey, oh, that's here's why. a question for you. I black get beans everything without beans. the beans. I don't oh, eat that's the beans. why. Do, I get beans all the time. You do black beans or pinto beans? Pinto. Oh, my gosh, bro. You got to get the black beans. It's oh, all about the okay, black okay. beans. Okay, okay. Now I know. I don't. I rarely go to Chipotle, but when I do, uh-huh. I get the pinto. I don't, right, right. I don't do beans in mine. I just oh, get no wonder, no wonder when I'm on the toilet. It comes yeah, you out get the pinto, toilet. you're going to tiptoe to the bathroom. <laughs> no, <I'm just laughs> it totally went over his head. <laughs> I mean, what happened? Yeah, he didn't hear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry, we'll leave just... that for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's 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 pretty much it. I mean, there was other few questions, but we're running a long time. But okay, pretty interesting. You know, pretty almost, almost yeah. it was, except for the couple of noodles and the ramen. Right, that right. was the only difference. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That goes to yeah. show, brother, sister right here, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt. All right, so we're going to get into, dive deep into um, what the podcast is really about. You know, we're going to talk about our cultures in general, right? Uh, and, and and the passing down of the torch, you know, lack of better words. And then also we're going to touch on, you know, a little bit more deeper topic later about, you know, d- disabilities and other stuff like that within our, our Islander culture, really. So that being said... You know, nowadays, right, we a lot of there's so there's a lot of talk about, you know, people not being able to speak their language or not understanding the their their culture as a whole. You know, I, I think there's a lack of teaching within the family, especially when us islanders are out here in the mainland, you know, in America or in, in a different country or whatever it may be. Like how important is passing on traditional you know, cultures and customs, practices, you know, and values to our younger generation, you know, specifically in your Tongan culture and then um, also, you know, as, as a whole, you know, Pacific, Pacifica. Okay. Um, I guess first and foremost, um, for me at least, um, it's very important. Um, and if that's one thing, at least what I've noticed between other cultures, not to put anyone on the bus, I feel like the Tongan culture is very, um, they're very good at maintaining, you know, the culture to a degree because, you know, a lot of the generations grew up seeing, you know, and seeing is believing, mm-hmm. believing is teaching, you know, and doing all that stuff like that. So, um, like, at least when we grew up, um, our first language was Tongan. Um, mm-hmm. At the time, I was like, dang, man, my own. you know, I used to get beat, you know, like, you know, for, for speaking, speaking English because yeah. it's a Tongan household, right? But I see the value in it now because it's like, like you said, you know, not many people know, you know, their their original like language and yeah. stuff like that from where their parents are from. And it's just super important to instill that to our next generation because it plays in part of what our identity is, right? Because like, like you know, in this life, you know, when we live, it's like, we're always like, oh, what am I supposed to be? Like, what's my purpose? Right. That plays in part in who you are which is like a foundational thing. And that's how it's like, Hey, I remember where I'm from. Like, this is where I need to go. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So that's at least my, my side of it. Yeah. And to go off of that, um, we, like we spoke Tongan first, like, um, since we were little, our parents never spoke English to us. So, um, me personally having to go to school, like I didn't, the teacher couldn't understand me. I couldn't understand the teacher. And, um, at the time, you know, Spanish was the other second language that they were able to maneuver with those kids. Mm-hmm. So when it came down to like our kind, <laughs> they're like, uh, what do we do with this? We just learned to speak. Right. <laughs> right. So they're uh-huh. like, okay, what do we do with this one? Um, you know what? Like, let's try to throw her in the Spanish group. And then when you go there, it's just like, no, yeah. Yeah, which, typ- which typically to, happens. Yeah, right? you might, we got to teach her English first. Like, you know what I mean? So um, mm-hmm. that was difficult in itself because when we would come home, well, at least for me, our dad would whoop us because he's like, you don't speak that over here. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm like, uh-huh. then why am I going to school? Like, yeah. right. <laughs> don't send me to school because I'm like learning this stuff, you know? Yeah. And mm-hmm. then like, you know, growing up, um, asking for help with homework, it's yeah. like, I don't know your homework. <laughs> and it's like, I don't either. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. what are you talking about? Exactly. So the funny thing is, I used to always have a dictionary and a thesaurus on me mm-hmm. at all times. Because in order for me to understand or, like, communicate with people, I had to, like, and reading was, like, my, um, that was my thing. Like, 
I just want to read a, a book to go get tested on. Because, you know, back in the day, they used to do that over here, at least. Um, mm -hmm. You just read a book, go take a test to see if you actually comprehended it well. Mm -hmm. And that was my thing. Like, if I got a good percentage on each right. of the books that I um, read, mm -hmm. I knew that I was, like, catching on, like, learning English. So right. okay. I read so many books, like, down to the little Harry Potter series. Like, I was okay. a nerd. So, um <clears throat> But I always had, like I said, the dictionary and the thesaurus so that I could revert to, like, you know, the letters that I, you know, the yeah. words that I didn't understand. And then I would look it up and I'm like, okay. And then, you know, when my mom was having trouble and stuff, I'm like, oh, let me, let me see what this word means. And then we got to figure out how we're going to, you know, do this and this and that. So quick uh, side, quick side question. Uh, you, you mentioned Harry Potter. So Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Harry Potter. Harry Potter for sure. All the way, man. I'm a that's yeah. It's not even a debate. For me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'll be another side. <laughs> Harry but, uh, Potter for me for sure. Yeah, same. Because we because like, we read the books dude, and then we would go watch, watch the, the movie. movie. So like, and I was I yeah. literally grew up with that. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, yep. That book. So yeah, and uh, remember Uncle uh, Una. Una used to like. Oh our yeah, uncle, our uncle would, from the so minister. He yeah. was a priest out in a monastery in Tucson, so he would specifically drive around the times it, were, it was released, and he would take us to the movies mm -hmm. to go watch. To go it watch it, yeah. Okay. So that was like our thing nice, at yeah. that nice. time. Yeah. So it was more then, of not not just the story itself of the book and the movie. It was more of that family. More like nostalgia, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More that, connection to that. it. <laughs> and then we'd be out. I'm like, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm like, oh, I still, I still sing it wrong. Yeah, I still, yeah. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's bro, we used to be. Like, Livio. Uh, dang, dude, that was. Wait, hilarious. so I might, I might have missed it. You guys are uh, born and raised here in Arizona. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like half mm -hmm. of our siblings. Um, our older, mm -hmm. like down to the middle, mm -hmm. born out there, and then okay. like middle to like youngest. Yeah. youngest yeah. Here. You're the youngest? No, no. Um, we have younger we brothers. We have younger brothers. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so, like five, so six. Bringing, me, bringing me to that point about, you know, where you was born and where you um, where you raised, right? Um, somebody like, I guess not me, because I was still born in A Island, just not in Samoa. I was born and raised in Hawaii, right? So I have a good understanding of, you know, preserving the cultures and all that stuff. But I think in two episodes ago, I talked uh, with our uh, Fijian friend Va uh, about, you know, those that are born in the mainland away from the island and then raised in the Americanized way. So luckily enough, you guys were raised in the talking culture away from home, right? So, um, but there are a lot of other islanders that are born and raised in the mainland, and especially Cali or wherever it may be, right? And they were taught English. They were taught to live the American way. And they don't understand anything about the practices, the cultures. They just know that, oh, I'm someone or I'm Tongan. That's all I know. Like, how <clears throat> how do we change that now? Like, is it is it more of a, the parents really got to pass it down? Or is it the efforts of the kid going out and trying to learn their culture? You know, or is it a little bit of both? Um, well, for me personally, because I do have, like um, my younger kids, mm -hmm. um, I feel like it comes from me first because, you know, your kids, they're learning already, you know, just their basics in general. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's very important for us to instill that in them yeah. so that they can recognize um, where they come or where their parents are from mm -hmm. and that they're a part of that and that they should know that part of themselves. Yeah. Um, and my uh, my oldest, I put her into um, Talsala dancing. Shout out to Talsala. Let's go. But um, that helped her kind of like, this was her first year. So she's only trained for like three months. And her being around the, the culture of dancing and stuff like that, it just, you can see that she's like um, comprehending like, oh, okay, like this, it's like family. Mm -hmm. Like. And then um, just the different cultures that they are dancing, like, you know, Hawaiian, um, Tahitian, Tongan, like, I feel like that's where it starts. You start finding outlets that they can go to to um, feel welcome right. and, like, create a safe space for them right. so that they can ask comfortably like right, about right, right. you know where they come from how did you know yeah how did they start dancing you know how did you start your dance group or how did you start your podcast like mm -hmm. what what was the purpose behind it and then 
I feel like that's how they can learn. It goes to show that how tight knit our, you know, Polynesian Pacific Island community is, right? Because mm-hmm. it's not <clears throat> just on the parents, mm-hmm. right? It's it takes a community. It takes a village to raise a kid, right? They like we like yep. to say that. But, you know, the efforts of everybody kind of doing their part, you know, outside the household, right? So kind of joining Telsala, right? That's just another outlet, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, for my podcast, which I'm trying to do, that's another outlet that people can learn from a Tongan or someone or Hawaiian that I've mm-hmm. had before, right? right? So I think a lot of parents, I mean, we do this a lot in our island culture. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves, mm-hmm. right? And then when something doesn't go right, it's like our fault. Yeah. But... Not blaming the other people, our community, but it's just finding, like you said, finding those outlets, right? Um, another question on the, along the lines of that is, so with, with uh, I think I mentioned it before, my podcast, uh, with, with my family, my grandparents moved um, the, all his kids, his whole family to Hawaii uh, to, you know, get a better life, right? That's kind of what we do. You know, sadly, that's how it is, right? Get off the rock to... Um, have a more successful life, I guess, you know. Um, so, but what he did was he, at that time, this was like in the 50s, 60s, right? Moving the family over, you know, around that time, it was like, you, if you're not going to make it if you don't know English, right? And so my grandparents told all of um, his kids, like, hey, when you have kids, teach them English, mm-hmm. which is kind of sad to know, like, that's the first thing he wants them to do, right? But, you know, the time difference. Well, now it's a little bit better time now where you could be successful bilingual, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of people out there that have that mindset still stuck. Or stuck in that mindset, so, um, I should say, of like, oh, I need to teach my kids English. Like, that's the only way or one of the best ways to be successful. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you guys say about that? I just feel like we're not um, exposed to a lot of opportunities mm-hmm. that, um, like, you know, finding outlets and I feel like another thing is um, people don't connect um, maybe because they are, you know, overthinking it or, you know, um, that's that's pretty much what I think. It's kind of there's kind of a shame factor that plays a part. Right. Like when we're out of our element, not in the island, you know, everybody's speaking English and you're you don't know how to speak English because there's a little shame. Right. So now the more shame they get, the more they kind of regress back into their little hole of like, I don't want to show our tongue inside in, anymore. You know what I mean? I think mm-hmm. I think that kind of plays a big factor. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? I see. Mm-hmm. So um, as far as, sorry, I just want to. No, you're good. Your yeah, question. Go so your question was um, like creating a safe space to to actually learn English or. Well, it's it's more of a it's more of a like it's OK to know your language oh, your okay tongue, okay right? i see i see because like, um and it's not the only way that english is the only way you know because there's mm-hmm. so many you know uh, uh um pacific islanders out there that can speak their native tongue and speak right. english and they're successful right mm-hmm. or there's there's successful people out there that not very well in english but they're still making it Mm-hmm. Um, and there's that, that, that stigma that, you know, from back in the days that like, you need to know English mm-hmm. only, you know, to succeed. Right. For sure. So. Um, I feel like a lot of that plays in with like leading by example. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as like your parents, like seeing what they did, cause obviously they can only teach you as much as they know. And then it's up to you to, to decide whether you want to elevate. So right, say, right. or learn English and things of that nature. Cause man, they can teach you how to say hello, goodbye, you know what I'm saying? Food, yep. you know, like the yep. simple words, but I feel like it definitely is up to you. Cause like, for instance, like she carried a th- uh, thesaurus, sorry, or like a dictionary, mm-hmm. like who would have thought of that? Like, why would you do that? Right, right, Because right. You, you have this craving for, for education, for learning, you know, for, for getting the gist of, like, how things work, you know, mm-hmm. in our society. Yeah, especially the, here the only America. reason yeah. I did that, because I used to make fun of my mom all the time. <clears throat> right. And, like, I just I just she knew like, I couldn't, you know, you can't, at the book you like, can't uh, talk like, smack <laughs> unless if you can back it up, right? Yeah, so right, I was right, like, right. I'm going to keep this dictionary right <laughs> yeah. here just in case. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. So, I mean, like, it, it plays hand in hand, mm-hmm. but at the same time, like, it gets to a point where 
it really is up to you and that's in anything you do in life right so yeah that's just kind of my, my take it, on that. it goes it goes back to i don't know you don't like this word it goes back to balancing yeah absolutely right? yeah. finding finding that balance that works for you right for you right mm-hmm. or or as a parent finding that right balance for that for your kid Mm -hmm. and just suggesting right like hey these there's this way there's that way Mm -hmm. now it's up to you right and giving them the option exactly because you know our stigma our tongue culture it's like no it's this way or the highway like it's this way or the highway right right. (laughs) (laughs) you want to go on the highway okay go on the highway (laughs) exactly you're going alone i will push you like (laughs) like, that's how it is in the tongue culture so i feel like our generation is breaking you know certain stigmas where you know, for example, our entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that's not um, looked upon um, when we were younger. It's more of just like go to school, be a doctor, be a lawyer, whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And it's right. um, you say entrepreneur, they'd be like, go ahead, yeah, go ahead, Matt, go ahead. Like, what like, is that? Ahead, Andre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, like, yeah, like I, was, uh, yeah. I was about to say you missed a few, which, but mm-hmm. that was the common one where like, yeah, like you need to be a doctor or whatever. But who, who, who said you need to be a doctor? Right. That was just the stigma back then. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. That was just at the time, the doctors and uh, all these people, politicians or whatever, are the making ones that money. was making the money. Making right? The money right. You know, at least in America, at least. Right. Right. Um, and then the other one was like utilizing our natural abilities in sports mm-hmm. right. Right? right and then the best thing the next best thing after sports was the military right, right. right. so those those were like you said those are the set ways mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. that was set and i mean we're all living examples of that you know a lot of us have tried to go the <clears throat> sports way right mm-hmm. and then there's a lot of people in the in the army mm-hmm. a lot right. of people in there i mean i always joined the air force like you know what i mean i just fit right into the stigma right but you know um finding those outlets right and this was my opportunity uh with doing this podcast or and whatever or that i'm trying to do right all of that goes back into you know preserving our culture and there's so many different ways that we could do that it's very important you know like you said to you know acknowledge it and then find your outlets and there's so many different ways but Is there a specific right or wrong way of trying to preserve it? Because some people look at others that are trying to preserve it in certain ways as like the wrong way. You know, like there's there's people, you know, not calling out Hawaii, but there's people in Hawaii that are trying to preserve their culture. But some feel like they're doing it in the wrong way. They're doing it in a very negative or rude way or because they're just kind of angry, mm-hmm. you know, with stuff that's been happening right. um, or still happening, <clears throat> right? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, is there a right or wrong way to try to preserve your culture? I don't know if there's a right or wrong way. I feel like it's more in terms of trial and error, right? So, like, um, that's, like, for one. Like, for instance, like, for me, one way I like preserving is I refer to the word, right? So, um, you know, the Bible. So mm-hmm. I like kind of reading. I don't know if you've seen the, the other side of heaven. I did. Yeah. Remember Koli Poki? Yeah. How he has yep. like the English dictionary. and the <laughs> yeah. I know it's kind of funny or cliche, but it, it's a good thing to do to, to help preserve, you know, mm-hmm. even if whether it's Tongan, Samoan, Fijian, yeah. you know, Maori, whatever it is. So um, because it helps kind of freshen because the fact that we learned it first it's kind of easier for me to comprehend like, oh, they're saying this. And then this is just a brush up on like, okay, you shouldn't say it that way. You should say it right. this way. Um, so that's other things. Um, for instance, like Tausala, like that's one thing I like to, you know, to use as a platform to like, to be around. And, and I don't know if it's like specifically for culture, but it's like mana knows mana, right? Yeah. And I, you know what I mean? Like we understand our energy we have around mm-hmm. each other. And like the fact that we want to preserve that is to preserve you know the values we instill like Mm -hmm. you know family like you know kinship i know those mean the same thing or like you know having you to be there for each other discipline at that which is a huge thing faith you know Mm -hmm. and like you know other things like church you know like we have you know our church our tongan churches you know every last sunday and stuff like that those are different ways to preserve our ways of life and then you do what you will to preserve that because obviously it's different out here in America, right? Like, yeah. you know, yeah. we can only live so much as like a Tongan. We're not in that environment, right? And then even like for your saying when you're in Hawaii, like, you know, there's certain ways, the island life, so they say, yeah. you know, and it's kind of hard to replicate that here. So kind of do do the best that you can with that knowledge that you have, I guess. Yeah. 
Right. Sorry, that was way over explanatory. No, you're no, good. You're good. <laughs> I, think it, I think it's just a matter of, you know, teaching what you know, what you yeah. was taught, right? Exactly. You know, I, 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 we, we talked about this before, uh, me and Kaleo, about how really it comes down to it was just a game of telephone. You know, passing it down verbally, mm -hmm. telling yep. the stories as of their experiences and, and what their ancestors, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, who's to say that it really happened, right? But at the same time, that's you, you kind of got to take that leap of faith of of mm -hmm. this is what it is. You know, that that's that's how it's supposed to be, you know, and then and then how you portray that as you move on to your life. That's, you know, that's the importance of it. That's the, the significance part of it is doing your part to preserve it, to pass it on. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Um, I know, I know you have kids. What are some, what are some ways that you, that you already doing and then planning on doing to, to try to preserve the tongue and culture? Um, one of the ways that I do, I, um, we have a big mirror and I would, um, I'll write like words on there, maybe like love. Um, what is it? Like, what well, other words but i'll put the equal and i'll be like this is what this is how you say love and then when they stare in the mirror they're like mm -hmm. like you know i've been doing um affirmations with them lately so what i'm trying to do is get their english right first and then i'll be like okay this is how you say this okay and this is what it means and um so they've been they just started their affirmations last week so i'm trying to do it as a daily thing and then when they're looking at the mirror reading it they can actually okay, this is what this means. Right. Um, try to find like little creative ways and, you know, to, for them to see themselves, mm -hmm. say it, and then actually comprehend it and then repeat it. Um, it's so. the, it's the, the simple, small things, right? Mm -hmm. we, we don't have, it doesn't to, have to be anything it, extreme. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I think a lot of, a lot of people, at least new parents, you know, kind of get in that mindset of like, oh, I have to do it the way that my parents or my grandparents mm -hmm. did it. Like, mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, like trying to gather everybody up, mm -hmm. doing like this whole thing. And it's like, I feel like it just starts at home. Just start yeah. simple, start it small. Yeah. And, you know, from there, they'll pick up on it. And then, yeah, for sure. Um, because in America, it's different. Like, it's just a nonstop, like, hustle, like trying to, you know, survive out here. Um, mm -hmm. Back in Tonga, all they do is <clears throat> pray and go to church and it's like it's two different you know yeah. nature versus <laughs> nurture yeah, yeah. For sure. so our nature is definitely different from you know tonga and it's yeah. like it's kind of hard that's where the the part you're saying is like how do we preserve that is because this world that we live in out here it's like so like ongoing you but there's oh, yeah. we don't really have enough time to yeah. keep like i mean but people do make the time but you see the difference in their yeah lifestyle if that makes yeah. sense it's 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 kind of a tricky thing right when you have to uh or well you where you you want to preserve the culture right but the move the, the world is continually moving and we're we're so behind yeah we're so behind right well we are we were already behind mm -hmm. and when we caught up now it's like okay i can take the time to try to preserve the culture this way but it's still moving so now it's like dang finding that balance right mm-hmm yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break. Um... All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from the break. Uh, There's a little bit of break, but uh, before we continue on. Again, this uh, podcast is brought to you by Pacific Ave Company. If you guys want 10% off any purchase, go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter on the website. Everything's going to be linked down below in the description. Go check them out. Get that 10% off and rock that gear because we are looking pretty good with the gear right now. <laughs> here. But yeah, so we're going to dive deep into, you know, a topic that's, uh, I guess, I guess I could say it's pretty sensitive. You know, it's, it's a, uh, it is a pretty sensitive topic. Um, about you know disabilities and stuff like that uh, or along the lines of that uh, whether it be uh, mental health or or um, you know cerebral palsy or autism or just disabilities in general um, there's a lot of stigmas on it there's a lot of uh, um, I'm trying to find a word a lot of uh, yeah so um, but but it's it's 
it's one thing just in general, right? But I feel like it's it's another thing in our Islander communities, because uh, to me at least, you know, I've experienced and I've heard um, have heard other people tell me that, you know, it's a very touchy subject. Like they don't want to talk about it or they don't want to acknowledge it that it's even a real thing. Um, so we're gonna talk about that a little bit. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Um, what is your guys' uh, I guess experience with that? Do you have family members with any type of disability, or have you had past family members or friends or? Um, well, for me personally, my my daughter passed away two years ago, and she had a heart condition. So, um, that in itself was a. Um, it was a journey for sure. I think it was more of um how do I say this? Um I mean with American culture they wanted to do surgery and all these things, but coming from the Tongan background, um kind of just for me, if God made her that way and he wanted uh my daughter, I can't really control that. Um so um at the time I almost lost her at five months. But um, I prayed like really hard in that that room, just saying, just give me more time. Just give me more time with her. Just let me get to know her. Like, even if it's going to hurt like crazy, um, just just let me get to know her a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then um, I specifically asked for that. And I asked for um, I don't want her to pass away within four walls. That's not what I want for her. Um, and my healing journey has been, it's like I told you the other day, it's just starting because I had just started my therapy and things like that, just to get an outlook of, you know, where we came from when we were little. Um, I'm trying to go back on my inner child mm -hmm. and then like try to work from there, trying to, um, learn how to grieve. And then we just lost our brother two weeks ago. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, a process and um with the disability i just felt that um let me just i'll just take her home you know all the doctors didn't think it was um you know they wanted her to get the surgery and stuff but i didn't want her to go through that pain you right. know um it's selfish for me to want to keep her and mm -hmm. try to put her through that because you know that's a lot to yeah. for you know her to go through so we ended up taking her home and um Every day was literally, I, li I lived every single day like it was my last with her. And I think that's why um, for me today, it's just, I turn my purpose, my pain into purpose. That's what I do. Right. Um, everybody is just like, hey, I see you doing this, this and this and that. There's, there's nothing you can do. And it's like, it's not just me, all of us. All of us can do whatever we want to do. Um, right. Whatever you put your mind to, we can do it. Just... Um, instead of, you know, all the stress and the pain that you go through in life, instead of um, taking that energy and trying to mope around and, you know, like why life is not fair, life is never going to be fair. So use that energy and put it towards what you think you want to do. Um, right. As far as your passion, your purpose, whatever it is, you stay consistent and um, you'll see it flourish. Like. Yep. It could just like your podcast today. Maybe the rock will be here next week. Like <laughs> <laughs> you never out. know. Hey, but yeah, yeah, as long as you're sense. you're focused and you know in your decision, like the that was probably the hardest decision I've ever had to make in my life. But we had some very good times. Like I feel like I I lived those two years like to the fullest. Mm -hmm. Than I have like my whole life. If right, that makes right. sense. That's all. That's all you can do. Yeah. You know, you just really enjoy that moment right right that the moment that you're in right mm -hmm. a lot of i mean it's a lot of people a lot of people always try to think about the future or they get stuck in the past it's not bad to think about your future right mm -hmm. but when you start thinking about your future too much you forget about the now exactly so i think that's why it feels like that right and um i could tell just i could tell it and and you know, I can hear the the the, gen, the genuineness behind your voice that you really did enjoy that yeah. time. Um, mm -hmm. As as painful as it was, it was yeah. it was kind of balanced out by the enjoyment, the happiness. In yes, the moment, right. And it happened at the beach. 
Like, it was like, you know, when I tell people the story, they're just like, dang, that's crazy. Like, that's messed up. But in reality, when I tell you that I prayed for this, I just asked for more time and just pretty much like a peaceful send off kind of thing. Cause right. I, she was not supposed to make it that first time she went into her um, cardiac arrest. But um, the fact that he granted me more time with her, even though it wasn't um, the longest I would have liked for it to be, I got that chance. And then um, what other better way? And she said, this is where I want to be mom. So that's just like strong in itself. And I feel like every day I just, I just know what that feels like. It's just a different perspective for me for life. So yeah. um, if I can try and, you know, motivate or, um, you know, anyone comes to me, I'd be like, I've been through some crap, but I mean, we all are going through it. And as long as you have that positivity in yourself that you'll get through it, you'll be fine. It's the, it's, it's the one thing that a lot of people struggle with is the mindset, mm -hmm. right? You got you to gotta be able to have that strong mind to make that decision to keep moving forward. You know what I mean? And a lot of us struggle with that. Um, well, first of all, I should have said this, condolences, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, prayers okay. from me and my wife and my family to, to your family. Because um, sure. I know you kind of threw it in there. Your brother did pass too, right? So very, very sorry for that. Um, um, obviously, you know, both of them are in a better place, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they're watching over us. They're, they're throwing down their blessings right now, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, and then you mentioned that, you know, you started going to therapy and stuff like that from a female's perspective, you know, in the Polynesian or Pacific Island community, there's that, that I guess, perception, uh, that it's okay for a female to go to therapy compared to men in our Islander, right? Like has, have you got any backlash uh, of going to therapy or, you know, showing that vulnerability? Um, not necessarily a backlash, but um, I feel like growing up, like, therapy is not... I don't think the Polynesian culture believes in therapy nope. or counseling and stuff like that. But yeah. um, but for someone like me that's struggling, you know, to accept the fact that, um, you know, the things that happened with my daughter, it's just kind of like... For me, I didn't feel like it was fair. I was more angry than I, I could possibly be at the mm -hmm. time. I went boxing. Like, I, I tried to find so many outlets because I was just so angry. Like, and to be that, to be in that um, space, it's it's hard to get out of. So, um, my OB doctor is actually Kim, and she, she's amazing. Um, she would give me uh, suggestions on, like, what I can do mm -hmm. and things like that. So, it's really important, I feel like, for us to... Um, like, if you're going to doctor's appointments and stuff like that, like, take the resources that they give you seriously because I, I feel like most of the time they're just like, no, I'm okay. Like, right, right, right. Like, I don't need that. I just, just yeah. do what you need to do. But yep. just try to take, take the time to look <clears throat> into it. I mean, you don't have to try it. But um, for me, therapy um, has helped. It, I've been taking it for a while, but I I didn't find the, the right person, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. Yeah. Because I had two before this this one that I'm going with. And um, you just got to find a person that you can actually um, connect with, connect with Yeah. that can, um, it's not necessarily you trying to find someone that you can relate to. It's more of someone that can understand um, what we've like, you know, what I've been through when I was mm -hmm. younger and they can actually tell me like, okay, this is why you do this because right. when you were little, this is what happened. This is how it is. And that's why you're like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh okay that clicks you know right. so that when i'm in life and um instilling in my children that's why i do this is because where i went wrong at or where i could fix it mm -hmm. i don't want to teach them what i learned right I right younger. right so um when they let me know like hey when you do this this is what you're doing i can actually be aware of it catch it and try to fix it for sure and for sure. um that's that's why why I do therapy because I feel like people are just like oh you're just going there to like tell your, you know your life and this and that yeah. it's like no for me I just need the um, the logic and the terms behind of why we do certain mm -hmm. things and then yep. even with other people you can recognize oh why is a certain person maybe frustrated during mm -hmm. the day like yep. you can it's just for us to be kind to people because we don't know what yep. everyone is going through so 
So you got so you so you got a little specifically from the the, the Tongan community or just Islanders in general. You got any judgment? You never got judgment of like oh you're just because you mentioned that oh you're just doing it just to. And it was it specifically because you you show that strong that strong front like oh you don't need it like why are you going there you know what I mean yeah um, no I don't think I've ever got I I've never actually talked about it okay to be honest um, it was kind of just like a um, a healing journey for mm -hmm. myself um, because I don't know anyone that's been through therapy so for me I like whatever I can do and take the opportunity for myself to find outlets yeah i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna do it by myself right and then if it's helped me i'm gonna suggest it and maybe you know like we're talking about it right now and maybe people are going through it you know grief grief is really hard oh yeah and um power of prayer is very strong so always always say your prayers um but also try to find find ways to um like I said, turn your pain into passion, your mm -hmm. your purpose. So that goes to show, you know, you said you don't know anybody that's went through it, therapy before. That goes to show how much of our islanders don't want to do that mm -hmm. because they either, either shows weakness or it shows, you know, men are not used to being vulnerable, all that type of thing. Is, um, well, speaking of that, you know, Ben, like, um, do you go to therapy or have you been to therapy or do do you do, are you in that same mindset of like maybe i shouldn't because i don't want to be judged or whatever being a tongan um me specifically at least um i know i've talked about that about it you know as far as like therapy and whatnot um honestly i've been on a huge like self-development journey for like the last like six years and she can attest to that like um as far as sheesh where my mindset was then to like now now it's like instead of like why is this happening it's like okay i get this is happening what can i do to fix it and what's it for like what can i learn out of this exactly um and as far as like therapy uh stepping into that like that's something i would like to do um right now um it's just i'm kind of going through a whole shift right now so mm -hmm. it won't make sense for me right now right. um just kind of where i'm at but it's definitely something i want to invest into because i mean every successful person you you know every entrepreneur they talk about oh yeah like i had a mentor you know i had some you know like i these are certain things that they had to figure out about themselves so yeah. like she said we can use that that pain turn it into purpose right so um uh, for for me as a man like like she said we didn't know many like and i mean as far as any backlash like i haven't fully i haven't gotten any but i can also understand the reason why there is because yeah. it's just a na uh, a lack of knowledge right, of right, knowing right. that you know because you won't know something's wrong if it's not pointed out mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then yeah. like if you see something's wrong it's like you question and wonder like man why is it like that like yeah. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and this is and that and there i feel like there's no um there's no other perspective to face to there isn't so like you know what i mean and i mean uh like you said you know that's why we're here right you know um getting through those hard conversations like why are the things that they are yeah. and like how can we find a solution so um yeah i think therapy's a if you can afford it heck yeah like you yeah. know if you can do therapy do yeah. it because um the sooner you find out the the sooner you'll get to where you need to be right, where you want right. to be yep. you know so uh, yeah kudos on you for doing that shit. Uh, yeah no for sure kudos for you because uh, i've i've had my experience you know in therapy mm -hmm. uh i have a lot I had, i've had a lot of things that was uh, going on and i had you know i was diagnosed with a few things um you know a lot of it played apart from from the military that um that i was in and deployment and all that stuff so uh, long story short, PTSD, anxiety, depression, all that stuff. And I've had my fair share of, um, you know, basically not being here, you know, and, um, going to therapy, you know, really, you know, I really was able to find myself, you know, because I was vulnerable. Right. And at first I was kind of judging myself because I, in the back of my head, I knew I was going to get judgment from, you know, the, the older folks in our cultures, mm -hmm. you know? You know, like we mentioned all the time or this whole time, like um, that doesn't exist or we don't do that or we're strong, suck you know, it up, yeah. right. Suck it up. Find my and you know, as they say in Samoan culture, mm -hmm. like, yeah. like <laughs> to a certain point, like, um, 
we understand that our generations and the ones coming up, right? We have a good understanding of that, of of, of it it not being bad to go through ther- to go to therapy, right? And like, how do we how do we um, bridge that gap between our generation and the older folks to understand that this is necessary? You know, therapy. Yeah. Um, I feel like um, obviously there's leading by example, but um, like I said, like uh, for six years of like self development and stuff like that, they can see the difference in you. Like they can see how much you've mm-hmm. changed for mm-hmm. the better. And I feel like that's the only way that they'll be able to, you know what I'm saying, like see or like understand that that's something that's like useful or right. like, you know what I mean? Right. Because they they can't believe what they don't see, right? Yeah. So if they see the difference that you're making, like the positive impact, you know, you're, you're um, radiating, you know, positive energy, you're attracting these people, like they can see, you know what I mean? Amen. What the yeah. shift that you've made mm-hmm. and it's like, then they ask you like, oh, like, what'd you do? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like, oh yeah, well, I had therapy. Well, you know, I've been reading books. I've been yeah, doing this. Yeah. I've been doing that. Um, and that's what led me to this point. Right, so right, I feel right. like it's more of showing, you know, the difference yeah, as opposed yeah. to like sitting there and debating and arguing. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. no, you're I mean, wrong. You know, no well, one likes to be wrong, you know? Right, so, right, right. Yeah. What I want to say to that, everybody has those family oh, yeah. members that even if you show the result mm-hmm. they're still not going to believe right oh yeah because mm-hmm. they're stuck oh, yeah. in absolutely and that's mine right and and that's where like um i've learned you know like you know you hear you hear people say stuff and you're just like why do they and then you want to confront it but at the same time you're just like they're hurt mm-hmm. right whatever is bothering them to say things like that about you and you questioning yourself is like no, there there's something behind the with within them that they need to fix mm, that has n- absolutely nothing like, to do with you, right, right, and it's right. like, but then you always be like, it's the same person, <laughs> right. no, <for> right. <laughs> but it's like, um, yeah, you just you just gotta ignore it, and that's that's something that they have to deal with. Yeah. You don't mm-hmm. necessarily have yeah. to deal with that. You just move how you move and make sure that you're doing it for the better, the good of what you need to do for yourself. In the in the least rudest way I could say this is that's a you problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Straight up. Capital I mean, it is, it like, is. Straight up. And I it's mean, like you can't let that interrupt like, you know, what you yeah, got going on. I mean mm-hmm. y- y- there's and, only we're always gonna want to help our families or friends, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because we're very family oriented, right? So there's only so much that you could you could help somebody. Um mm-hmm. and now it's up to them, right? Mm-hmm. To make that decision to actually take that step forward mentally. Um and that's that's a battle of in itself and we all understand that so mm-hmm. yep. um i want to i want to shift gears a little bit um from from mental health to actual um uh, uh, uh like physical disabilities that you know happens right like with autism or or cerebral, cerebral palsy stuff like that you know um to me at least personally i don't really hear a lot of talks about that in our pacific islander cultures you know uh, I met a I met a, a young lady uh, named Emily, and she um, uh, she started an org called uh, Sensor E Play, and she makes sensory boxes for autism. So, speaking of autism, um, on our website at Pacific Ave Company, we uh, made a shirt dedicated to Eliza, her son, um, who is on the spectrum uh, for autism, and uh, we made a shirt. So, uh, half of the proceeds that uh, are made from those uh, sold shirts are going to be donated to her or uh, to make more boxes for more kids around. So go check out uh, that at our website. If you want to support in that way, um, just purchase a shirt. And, um, yeah, you'll be playing a, a huge part into, you know, uh, something as small as just sensory boxes uh, for kids to be able to touch. And and um, it, it actually, you know, study shows that uh, those sensory boxes actually – help the developmental side of uh, especially the super young kids that mm-hmm. have autism um and one thing the reason why i bring this up because one thing that she's told me is that she never really got a lot of support from the pacific island culture or the communities um and and i think it has to do with um kind of what we were talking about with mental health it's kind of dismissed you know what i mean mm-hmm. like what are you know why why do you think that is why do we why do we dismiss things like that 
And I don't I don't know if it's like it's consciously it's not their norm. Right. Yeah. Like, right. Definitely not the norm. So it's kind of more unconsciously we kind of just dismiss it. Not like I mean, I know there's, you know, purposely a lot of people would just like, yeah, no. Like, no, I'm not going to deal with that or my son doesn't have that or my daughter doesn't have that, you know what I mean? They mm-hmm. are, maybe maybe they're shame because it's not I guess normal, quote unquote, right? Right. Mm-hmm. That's probably what it is. More shame than mm-hmm. um Yeah, definitely. I could only think of that being the only other thing, to be honest, aside from um, it not being highlighted, right? Because mm-hmm. um, and probably not lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge, what is, right? Yeah, that's definitely that, three components yeah. for sure. Because I know one thing, man. You know, Bali's they, they got their drama. Yeah, but you know, aside from that, like hearsay, you know, of what people are talking about, you know, oh, that's you know, this is not. I definitely think lack of knowledge plays a big part of it. Because it's like, you go to Tonga, you know, they were like, quite autism. Like, you know, yeah, like, what's like, autism? You know what I mean? You know and they're going to be like, like, there's nothing like that. Yeah. Like, what like, do you mean? Yeah, your like, cousin's like that. Your, it's like, that's why you're, that's yeah, why they're your just like, is, like uh, his you know, eyes just like, look like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, straight up. And I, I really think that's what it is. Yeah, they just yeah. don't know exactly. Or awareness. Yeah. Lack of awareness. Yeah. That's what it is. You know, there's a, there's a funny thing, right? And, and I'm not a... I don't know if this is a bad joke or whatever. Don't come at me, but you know, you know us Islanders, we we like to like hit deep when oh, we joke yeah, around. No, right? Oh yeah, so we they, roasted. No, no, we no, roast. We roast for sure. We go deep, and then we even bring in like we even bring in like uh, a god or something. Like oh, that's the way it's meant to be, right? We're like oh, yeah. God made him like that. He's fine. You know what I mean? Like jeez, why would you say that? You know what I mean? I haven't said those <laughs> words in a long time. Go say so God has blessed him. You know what I mean? Like they they would be like they would be like dismissive of it by saying stuff like that, right? Right, yeah. right, right. It's it's kind of weird, like. But um, how how do we overcome that hump of lack of knowledge, right? Other than like, I mean, yeah, hey, go do your research, like do your research. You know what I mean? Like, what else can we do to kind of bring awareness, you know, to to these type of things? Mm, starts from the home, um, as far as like. Obviously, like, oh, you can go do your research, but the fact that, you know, obviously we're a product of, like, the first generation or the last generation who basically, like, migrated here to the U.S. So, you're a first generation, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I I guess it's more in terms of, obviously, that's what they knew Mm -hmm. on how to go about it. So, that's our job to educate, you know, the younger ones, our kids, and stuff like that, um, about that. So I don't know if that answers your question. No, no, it does. I, I feel mean, like that's the only other way. Because, I mean, if you see somebody, you know what I'm saying, like who don't look really like, who look kind of out of the norm, right. walking by and stuff like that, your kids are going to question that. And be like, you know, like, that, like, why, why, why does he like walk that? like why that? Why walk like that? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So and then you got to, like, teach them and discipline right. them to be aware of right. yeah. those, you know, uh-huh. kids that need what? that extra help and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um Yep. Especially because, you know, kids are getting bullied nowadays. Mm-hmm. It's really important to educate them for sure. I mean, it, bullying has always been around, but I feel like it's been happening a lot more worse mm-hmm. nowadays. Right, right, right. You right. know, especially with social media going around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think, I mean, the simplest way is really just trying to bridge that gap between with our ancestors or um, our grandparents and our parents. parents really. yeah. Um, and then setting that example, like you said. You know, being able to be that example of, you know, uh, of, I don't know, maneuvering around situations like that and then teaching it to your kids, right? Because, yeah, kids are, like you say, kids are the most curious minds in Man. the world. And they be telling the truth, too. <laughs> exactly. You got you to be careful. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, my goodness. They are ruthless. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why, you know, with, with us, you know, we, we wanted to uh, partner with... Um, with Emily and Century and just, you know, kind of bring more awareness, at least on the the Pacific Islander side communities. Um, you know, I mean, there is a few communities out there or orgs that are, are doing their best of uh, spreading awareness and doing their part. But I think it needs to be done on a larger scale and everybody can play uh, play a part in, in doing that, at, at least talking about it, right? Because mm-hmm. that's the first way to acknowledge it is to talk about it. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, and under, when, when you talk about it, then you start to understand it more. 
Oh, yeah. So, absolutely. Um, exactly. That's with anything, really. Right. You know what I mean? Um, getting different perspectives instead of like, oh, yeah, we talked about it. That's the only way. Yeah. No, right, like, right, let's, right. let's hear what Ben has to say about yeah. him or, or right, Beto right. or Scott, right? So, exactly. Right. No, getting different perspectives, uh, just talking about it starts to get that more of an understanding of things. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then from having a more understanding, now all that prejudgment goes away. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. So Being, normal letting ways, right? the floor be open to right. mm-hmm. whatever you right. talk about. What do they say? Feet on the rug, right? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. So I'm going to end it with this before we say our thank yous. Um, uh, let's, uh, you know, do our part. Everybody, you know, everybody that's watching and listening and, and us in this room, you know, let's encourage you know, others to do their part as far as just talking about it, acknowledging, you know, situations like this with different disabilities or mental health or whatever it may be that, you know, us Islanders tend to push off, right, and right. pretend it's not there. Mm-hmm. You know, just, just uh, we encourage you guys to just do your part and, and acknowledge it, talk about it, you know. If you don't want to talk about it in a moment, like, you know, let it let it simmer for a little bit and then, you know, come back to it, you know. Like, there's only so much that you can hold in, right? Until it's until it, yeah, you know, blows up. Like, exactly. so yeah, we encourage you guys to uh, um, um, spread more awareness with with any type of disability or any type of situation that you know us islanders go through, uh, whether it be that or mental illness or, or whatever it may be. Because if we don't talk about it, you know, it's not going to get solved. Mm-hmm. You know, and. Like and I'm not I'm not saying that everything's going to be solved right away because mm-hmm. things are not always solved right. It's not a math equation. It takes a village. <laughs> yeah. it takes a village, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, if we all do our part, I think um, you know our peoples in wherever we are in the world, we're going to be in a in a I guess better state of mind. I guess we should say. Sure. Um, but yeah, before we uh, before we end off, you know, I'll give the floor to you guys. Uh, whoever wants to go first, so you can. Either shout out anybody you want to shout out, say your thank yous to whoever, and um, kind of mm-hmm. close this out. Um, first and foremost, <laughs> <laughs> I want to shout out the man above. Um, yeah, he's, thank you for sharing that blessings. Aside from that, um, one thing I really want to hit on for our Polynesian community is, you know, like they say, knowledge is power, right? And with that comes application, right? So, um, yeah, definitely get more into, you know, audiobooks, books, you know, read more, create that self-development so that we can create this awareness, you know, uh, fulfill that lack of knowledge that we have, you know, whether it's with mental health and things of that nature, make sure you're good in order um, to teach that to others, because we can sit here all day and talk about, you know, this, this and that. But if you're not, um, if you're not doing the work to to learn, it, it just, it stays with you. And it's just hearsay. So, yep. yeah, shout out to Star. Um, probably, she's probably going to shout out, shout out to Lions Properties. Um, and, yeah, just shout out to Growth. Yep. Uh, shout out to Star <laughs> and the Pacific. <laughs> what yep. is it? The Pacific Co- Company, yeah. Yep. And um, who else? Shout out, shout out to Lions Properties. And um, shout out to Family, man. Yeah. Uh, just the Pacific Island families, like I, I would like to see everyone um, be more comfortable with every island being together, if that makes mm-hmm. sense, instead mm-hmm. of being stuck in our own little right, right. cultures and stuff. I would like to see more unity. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Dad, uh, I remember, uh, I remember you saying something earlier, Ben, about mana, right? Mm-hmm. And mana is mana, right? You feel it. You feel that energy, right? And mm-hmm. The reason why, you know, with Pacific Ave, you know, I came up with the tagline or me and Scott actually helped us out, uh, helped me out too. Unite the Pacific, you feel the culture. Mm-hmm. You know, when you bring people together, you just, you oh, feel man. that energy. Mm-hmm. Right? You feel oh, like. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You got to zoom in on that one. <laughs> right. But feel when, the you, rainbow. when you bring people together, right, you, yeah. you just feel the energy. Feel exactly. That yeah, right? Absolutely. So, and, and that's what you know we're all about if you don't know you know our our message is to unite the polynesians melanesian micronesian all the peoples of oceania or pacifica um you know to remember that we are all one big family you know Mm -hmm. so i'm glad you brought that up um we always end the show with our little quotes you know kaleo is not here to to share a quote but basically she says you know remember to uniquely be unapologetically you 
Yes. You know, because that's the best thing you could do. Mm -hmm. uh, remember to tell the person you love, you love them, because uh, you never know uh, if tomorrow's going to come, right? And for me, I always say, you know, make sure you treat others the way that you want to be treated. You know, if we do that mm -hmm. in the world, yep. imagine if everybody does that, right? Exactly. Unless, unless you want to get treated bad. I'm not. not <laughs> <laughs> this show is not for you. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> but uh, you guys have any quotes or anything that you guys kind of live by? And me kind of leave leave the viewers. I have one, but I'll let you start. Oh, go ahead. Um, what is it? Uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Good one. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already said it, but just turn your pain into passion. Yep. Turn your passion. Yeah. Your pain into passion or your pain into your purpose. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what I've been sticking by. Nice, nice. Well, thank you guys again for taking the time out. I know it's late. <laughs> um, before we head off, ladies and gentlemen that are watching, um, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that notification button so that you don't miss any episode that comes out. Click it. Uh, if you guys are on Spotify, go ahead and rate the show. Uh, give us a five-star, four-star, three-star, even a one-star. That's fine. As long as if you rate our show, it actually helps us, you know, help us spread the message by by doing those type of things. Um, appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Yes, sir. Peace All right, y'all.